everyone. So in this experiment, we're going to do the one that's in your booklet on page 15, and it's called using a thermometer. And we're going to use the thermometer to heat water and measure the temperature as we go along. So the apparatus is set up as in your booklet. So you see you've got the safety mat, a Bunsen burner, a tripod, and our gauze. Your teacher will have told you what the job is of each of these things. You already covered that. So looking at the method, it says set up your apparatus as below. Then use the measuring cylinder, we're going to measure 100 centimetres cubed of water. Okay, so if you were in the lab, you would just use the sink. Then at the waist, you really need to get down to eye level to check. Put it on a flat surface and then down just to check that it's the right uh -huh. volume. See, it's 100. The bottom of the meniscus is on 100. Well, hopefully you can see that in the video. Okay, then I'm going to come back. I'm going to pour that water into my beaker. Make sure that all of it goes into the beaker and none of it spills out over the sides. Okay, then I'm going to put my beaker up on top of the gauze and put my thermometer in it. Now, I'm going to wait a few minutes for the thermometer. I'm going to move this a bit closer to the camera just to see the thermometer might change. Here's a top tip. Turn your beaker around and put your thermometer in the little pouring dimple. So then you'll be able to see what the temperature is on the thermometer. Hopefully that's coming up in the video and you can record the temperature on your results table at time zero for me. Okay everyone, so we got as far as measuring the temperature using this thermometer. Now for the purpose of this video, um, this is going to be very hard for you to see the time on the stop clock and the temperature in this thermometer. So I'm going to use what's called the digital thermometer and it's attached to a sensor. Um, the sensor's over here. Uh, we have a couple of these different sensors in science that we use to measure things. It gives us a more accurate reading and you'll see the measurement from the sensor coming up on the iPad and you see where it can measure to one decimal place, which if you look at your temperature that you wrote down at the start, I wonder did you write it to one decimal place? Hopefully you're maybe match. Hopefully what you read on the thermometer matches what's on the sensor. But I think just for the purpose of this experiment, for you to write down the results on page 15, you'll be able to then see the iPad reading of the temperature and the stop clock reading of the time. Okay, so I'm just going to light the Bunsen burner now and then we can get the experiment running and you can write down the results on page 15. So remember when we're lighting it, we've gone through this already, we have our air hole almost closed. Now, when we have a setup like this, we don't light the Bunsen burner underneath the tripod we have it off to the side and once it's lit then we'll push it underneath okay so air hole almost closed turn the tap on stand back and we light it now because we're lighting a liquid your teacher maybe will have told you this we're going to have our air hole just about half open we're not going to have it fully open just about half open when we're lighting the or heating the liquid okay so i'm gonna we're gonna put the camera in position now and then we're gonna time it for eight minutes just like the results are on page 15. So if you just double check that the reading for the temperature you've written down for time zero is 19.7 and then we'll get started with the experiment. Okay. okay, so the camera's in position. So I'm gonna start the stop clock and push the Bunsen burner underneath at the same time. Um, Mr. Cartland will let me know if the stop clock doesn't work. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. Stop clock working okay? It does. So we're gonna work our way through. You're just gonna watch the video and keep an eye on the timer for the stop clock and keep an eye on the temperature on the iPad and I want you to complete the results on page 15. Okay, I'm not really going to say very much during this eight minutes, I'm just going to let you watch the video and write down your results. Okay.
Okay, everyone, so we've reached the eight minute point. Now what you'll notice, and some of you might say that water boils at 100 degrees, and why is this maybe not exactly 100 degrees? If we have pure water, it would boil at 100 degrees, but this is tap water, so there's some impurities in it, which is why it might affect slightly the boiling point. Um, and you saw there whenever it was boiling, that it sort of fluctuated between 99 and like 100 for a wee minute. So yes, if we had pure water, we would, but we were just using tap water, you saw me fill it. So it will sit around 100 degrees until it all evaporates off. So your teacher will explain to you about the observations for this experiment and what you saw during it. Okay, thank you.